Welcome to the world united. Welcome to the world united. Pranam and welcome to the world united organization meet the master series. This series is a prelude to the third world parliament on spirituality which is bringing together six continents 200 nations 1000 plus spiritual leaders and 7.5 billion population together on one platform with the vision of unifying the consciousness of the world i'm excited and very honored and i feel really honored to have dr radhesham mishra with us who is a yogi and has been teaching traditional classical yoga of India across the world since 1993. He is a direct disciple of Dr. Jayadev Yogendra in the lineage of Shri Paramhans Mahadev, Madhav Das. Pandit Mishra is the founder and director of Ujjain Yoga Life Society International, member of Indian Yoga Association, Council of Yoga Accreditation, International Board of Yoga, advisor, member of the World Yoga Council and International Yoga Federation. His mission is to impart overall wellness through yoga. He conducts teachers training programs and has established over 100 yoga training centers around the world. Pandit Mishra has visited 22 countries to teach yoga. He has also authored many books, videos to educate the masses. Panditji was awarded PhD in Vedic Yoga from YS University, Florida, USA. He's also been a member of Yoga Expert Committee nominated by Ministry of Human Resources and Development for making policies and syllabus of yoga and higher education in India. You are welcome, Panditji, Dr. Radhesham Mishra, to the platform today. We'll be having a wonderful session together. Thank you so much, uh, Panditji, for being with us and uh, you know giving us your precious time here. So we'll start straight away with the questions now. The very first question is, since you've been teaching yoga since so many years now, what is yoga for you exactly? And uh, what is the traditional classical yoga that you are teaching? And what do you, how do you think it is different from uh, rest of the uh, yoga schools? Namaste to you and namaste to all the viewers participating in this big mega event. Mm -hmm. And uh, yoga for me is a way of life. It's the art of living your life. I, when I started this journey, I was... Uh, also thinking the same way like any common man thinks that is a like form of exercise you practice on the yoga mat mm -hmm. but uh, slowly and gradually when i studied i went deeper into this subject went into my practice and sadhana i realized how great this tradition is this culture is it's a culture it's a tradition and um, from morning to night when you wake up till you sleep even when you are in sleep, yoga tells you how to do, how to act, how to think, how to behave, how to do everything what you are doing in your day-to-day -day life can be done in a yogic way. So that is uh, yoga for me. And uh, uh, as far as this another question is concerned, the form of yoga. So I don't teach any form of yoga, I just teach yoga. These forms of yoga came much later when I entered into this world of yoga. Uh, till then, when I was in my training, yoga was one. There were not uh, many kinds of yoga, many forms and types of yoga. And when I very well remember when I was uh, in my training, my Guruji, Dr. Jaydev, asked me to teach uh, yoga to one lady came from USA. Her name was Dr. Suzanne. So uh, he said that uh, go and give her a personal class. 
I said, okay. So I went there. She was some VIP person for us because uh, she was doing uh, some research on yoga. So she came from Harvard so, to all the way to Mumbai. So we have, I went there. I was standing in front of her. I said, Namaste. And first question she asked me, what form of yoga do you teach? Which yoga do you teach? It was a very surprising question. A very, very surprising question because I had never heard this. There are uh, more than one form of yoga. So I asked her what, uh, what a strange question it is. We don't know any other form of yoga. We only know that yoga is one. So now in my country, there are many other uh, kinds of yoga, forms of yoga. I said, what are those forms? So she's named some uh, form of yoga. So I said, okay, fine, but I'm okay. Um, we don't know any other form. And then later I realized that um, by 2000, by the year of 2000, in India also, a uh, few forms of yoga started to come. I very well remember someone someone wrote me an email that uh, I was traveling to Europe in 2004 or five. Someone, uh, some participant of my workshop, she said, um, uh, she wrote me in advance, when, when you're coming here, uh, can you come to our class and give us a, a hot yoga class? Bikram yoga class. I said, okay, I have to research what it is. So I, I made a research and it was not yoga. So there are many forms of yoga. I mean, they put a name yoga, which doesn't go with the spirit of yoga. It doesn't go with the principle of yoga. But when you put the word yoga in front of anything, it becomes very marketable, sellable. People with the mindset that yoga is something good for body, mind, spirit, and all this very much popular in the world. So when you put something with yoga, or yoga with something, it becomes very, very popular. So that hot yoga, as a, like yogic asanas being performed in a very, very high temperature. So yogic principle and spirit is against. And if they are doing something against then yogic principle. So uh, I don't comment on those things. If, as, as long as people are liking, they can do it. But we do not know or teach or practice any other form of yoga. We teach Indian or we practice and teach and do uh, whatever we can in Indian traditional classical yoga. That's great. But there's one thing, you know, I would just like to know from you. People like what you're saying is hot yoga. Yes, there is power yoga also in Vogue today. So there are many people going that side. What do you think? Are they going to be benefited? Or how is it different from the yoga, the traditional yoga that we are taking? And is the youth more interested in the modern forms of yoga? Or we have students in uh, traditional yoga also. Right. So, see, when you do something with your physique, some exercise, you do get some benefit. So even with power yoga or hot yoga or whatever, astanga, vinyasa yoga, you do get some benefit. But here, you know, it's like you are buying um, a business class ticket and traveling into ATR, uh, aeroplane. So uh, yoga has a lot to... Um, offer you and you take a very small part of it. So power yoga is like um, exercising those asana, asanas of yoga in a very fast manner, uh, in an aerobic manner. So that becomes power yoga. Instead of saying it's aerobic, they say power yoga. It is aerobic. They have changed the uh, postures they have taken from yoga and perform in an aerobic way. So it is aerobic yoga, aerobic exercises. But since uh, I have already told you that uh, is when you put the word yoga, it becomes celebrity. Another thing you said about youth. Yes, any youth in the 
age of like 17 to 25, 28, and 30, maybe even later stage of life. They love to go for fast things. Mm. The mind is fast, mm. they, they are hyper, so they, they cannot sit quiet and remain calm. And, and classically yoga goes in a slow form. Yes. It has uh, something to do with in a slow manner, mm. a steady manner. So many people do not like this way, but uh, from far away, when they see things from far away, they, do not, they may not like it. Yeah. But even many youngsters, they came to us for training. So later they said, oh, before we came to the class, or we came for the training, we, were, we had a different mindset that I may not be enjoying this. But once you come and practice, this Indian classical yoga in a real form, in an authentic way, they also enjoy this. You just have to step in this saga, this, mm. this pool. And then everybody enjoys it. This, nobody said this is quite boring for them. So exactly, it is, you know, that um, just like fast food, the younger generation wants fast exercise. They take it only at right. the physical level, perhaps. Because traditional yoga is, See, I, as you said, it is very slow. So naturally, right. tolerance, you know, patience, and so many things one can learn. Right. It's like, a, it's a fashion. Mm -hmm. You cannot enjoy this fast food all the time. Mm -hmm. I have seen these fast food lovers. Mm -hmm. Oh, maki dal, maki roti. Mm -hmm. Haki banai hui roti. Kitni how, uh, how different and uh, uh, good, better than uh, our mass recipe, mother's recipe, mm -hmm. than this fast food. Mm -hmm. So, classical yoga is like our um, mother's recipe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you right. enjoy all your life, and uh, fast food is like other forms of yoga, fast yoga, and fast form of exercise. Right. It doesn't go for a long way. For example, you just see uh, in 19. Uh, 95 or 96 this hot yoga came mm. and after maybe 20 years it started to go down in 10 12 years mm. but after 20 years it's no more there all over the world all the hot yoga centers big time yoga centers closed down nobody yes. did anything anything against them it automatically people got bored you cannot eat fast food all the time Fashion yoga doesn't cannot go for in long run. This classical yoga is there in the on this earth for thousands of years and it's going to remain for another thousands of years. <laughs> so yes. we that's the difference. Yeah, and I can understand. You know, we like uh, I have seen where uh, even higher education institutes. You are also into it. You are in, in the advisory board. And uh, our prime minister has introduced you for in schools and colleges and everywhere. We like, I mean, where I am teaching, we had 60 seats and now they're double the seats, 120 in almost <laughs> six to seven years. This is the difference. Get it. Yes, Get many it. students are opting for this. Many students All are right. opting. Yes, the quality, uh, then if you want to see the quality, you have to follow the principles of that tradition. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, uh, you you know better what's, what's going on in the world. Yeah. So there's one more question, Radhesham. Just as a child, now we are talking about youth. As a child, mm -hmm. did you understand the importance of yoga and that is what made you come here? Or was it some other reason? What exactly inspired you to be uh, into yoga? No, uh, it, it was not like that. <laughs> I never... Uh, got interested into yoga kind of thing mm -hmm. in my childhood or even in my teenage. In the beginning of my life, like uh, we have stages in our life. First 14 years, you are dependent, um, totally dependent upon your parents. And your parents guide you or tells you what to do. Sometimes they force you, mm -hmm. even though you don't like such something. So my father, uh, initially directed me to go and become a karmakandi pandit, a, a priest who performs Hindu rituals 
like uh, katha and yagna and various ceremonies wedding ceremonies and all so i was sent to some vedic pandit uh, to study all that initially i i was okay but later i realized no i'm not interested in it it became very boring and later it became like a punishment i'm getting every day i have i'm forced to uh, memorize uh, shlokas and mantras which has no meaning to me and uh, no understanding uh, just chant shlokas this and the meanings are not uh, logical in my mind somehow it was a logical mind i i want to see uh, what logic behind it so you know in our hindu tradition there are many many things which is not logical but still people follow and there are many things which is logical but and scientific but you don't have proper master to explain all these things so maybe it was logical scientific and everything but my master was not able to um, deliver it to me in a logical way so i got disinterested and my father was forcing me hard i was i wanted to go into music uh, classical music a percussionist i wanted to become a tabla player and my father used to beat me for this kind of interest when i used to talk about it finally at the age of 14 i left home i ran away from home and i then never returned when till now uh this i we met we meet often but uh, i never returned back to my home i slept on streets uh, on the platforms and, and benches of uh, in park uh, maybe sometimes in dharmshalas then in a in a few months my life got into the track what i wanted to become that i was following so music music art theater and all i was doing that and that took me to film industry i entered into film industry as a assistant director to some big director and we were doing films here came a new thing that my body had some disease uh, which i was not knowing the name of that disease is asthma when i came into film industry this this industry has population of smokers and drinkers and alcoholic people so i got into addiction with them sangat ka asar hua and since that i was into that age then addiction level was so high even though i had asthma breathing problems I, i was smoking and coughing or smoking and coughing and that ended into a tagline that i'm a chronic asthmatic person and i'm not going to survive more than 4 5 months that was told by doctor asthma doctor the doctor her name is pooja shroff she said you don't come to me ever because i cannot treat you as long as you don't quit smoking and beer and all this we cannot treat you nothing will work on your body I said okay i tried but i could not i could not quit smoking then a yogi came as sanyasi came later i realized he is a yogi but at that time for me he was a sanyasi a monk and he had no place to live in mumbai and we met accidentally at some uh, religious place in a temple and i said you are most welcome to my room where i sleep and stay he said okay so that night i got asthma attack and he rubbed my back and front and chest and some some energy some power was there i i realized that such a um, different heat in my body and i got everything became normal in few minutes like 10 20 minutes and he said listen if you follow me you do what i say i can bring you out of your disease and you can live your full life some power was there in his in his words and in his whatever he said and i committed i said okay i take sankalpa now i i i give you my promise that i will follow you 
in the morning he woke me at four o'clock and he boiled some water, gave me some steam, and then he started to teach me pranayama. By the time sun uh, came, he took me up on the terrace and very gentle, very slow, we started to practice yoga together. My first class was for 10 hours, oh. six hours in the morning, four hours in the evening, but very gentle, very slow, relaxing. That's great. And in six weeks of time, um, my body weight from 48 to 54, came into 54. And I was able to eat a few things which I could not eat for many years. And he was teaching me. He was giving me all the hot yoga uh, uh, knowledge, practices. And after seven, eight weeks, he said, um, I go and teach yoga to some hospital. Can you come along with me? I said, okay. And then after that class, he said, I'm going to Rishikesh. You are going to take care of this class. You're going to teach here. I said, no, Swamiji, I cannot do this. No, no, it's a Guru Kadesh. It's an order from your Guru. And we had so much respect and values for Guru at that time. I have even today, but not all the people will use that. <laughs> so, okay, no problem. No any excuses. I will do that. He went. He went and then I went to teach yoga there. I kept teaching. I was waiting for him to come back, and but he never returned. I never met him again in my life. Oh. I searched for him everywhere, every oh. possible places. Uh, I went to those ashrams where what he mentioned that I had lived in those two, three ashrams. I was good in sketching, so I made his sketch and I showed uh, his sketch to people, but no one said that I have we have seen this kind of face in our ash. So it was very mystical uh, happening mm -hmm. had, with me. And then after a few days, uh, I, it became very difficult for me to teach yoga. I had no much knowledge, so I started to read books. I asked people where to go for uh, a systematic training. I got so much interested into it. I was, I thought came in my mind, I should leave everything and just practice yoga. And then I should take pro training, proper training from a perfect master so that I can serve this tradition to many people. So a book came in my hands from some friend and on the last page, uh, I saw uh, it was about teacher's training course so I went to that institute, the publish, the, the book was published. The name of that institute is The Yoga Institute. That's the oldest yoga school in this world. It was founded in 1918. We celebrated uh, centenary year, uh, two years back. So I went there, I met my uh, guru, Dr. Chaitya Vyokendriji. And he took me in, in that institute. Uh, there are more stories I will share some other time how, how difficult it was to enter into this institute for teachers training course. It was not like you apply and you get admission. Mm -hmm. They put you for seven days residential camp mm -hmm. and there they observe if you are eligible to join teachers training program. And I was not. Oh. They rejected <laughs> me on my candidature. Mm -hmm. And but uh, somehow in three months of time, I kept going, kept uh, requesting to take me in the course. And one day, Miss, only one thing he said after the uh, camp that <clears throat> uh, since your glass is so filled, we are unable to pour, we will not be able to pour anything into oh. it. I was so egoistic. Yes. Because I knew so much, I was thinking, I, was, I, I know so much. I was a journalist, I was a PRO of a big organization, I was into film industry, I was skilled in so many things in music and art and theater. So I had a big ego mind here. Mm. That was not, uh, that was a hurdle for me in going into yoga. So in those three months, I worked on that. I became zero from oh. so many <laughs> identities, I became zero identity. 
And since then, I never remember that uh, I know this or that. Uh, I just say I'm a yoga practitioner or yoga sadhaka. So that's how I entered into yoga institute and journey started. My guru, um, he was so kind with me that he gave a personal arrangement to uh, kill my previous, I'm using a negative word, but uh, that was a new birth. Yes. That Radhesha Mishra, uh, before 92, mm. was a different Radhesha Mishra. Because what makes you a, a personality is your thought process. Yes. The way you think. The content you have in your mind. Mm. The data you have here. Yeah. So my mind was like formatted by my guru. And <laughs> he rebooted everything and programmed a new mind which is what you see today. Yes. I very, very well remember some mother saying uh, to another mother, not to keep your child with Radhishyam, otherwise he will spoil your child. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a person I was. Okay. And uh, now people come with their children, people come with their parents, with the husband and the wife, mm. to take some guidance uh, from yoga. So it's a new birth for me. It's very fortunate. Uh, You've been very fortunate because you had a personal Definitely. guru for seven to eight weeks, as you said, who stayed with yes. you in your room, who yes. taught you, in fact, who pushed you. You were chosen by God. Ultimately, it can very be true. this. And that is what made you, you know, uh, go to various places in search of yoga institutes. You really wanted that. Correct. But I, the yes. first inspiration, if it came, it came from uh, that sannyasi, who stayed yes. with you in Mumbai and oh, whom yes. you searched, but you could not find him. Something very mystical, right. really. See, it's very interesting. Uh, my mind, my, I was so angry, mm. so egoistic. Mm. I would not have gone to anywhere for, my, uh, for the sake of my health. Mm. I want to live more. Mm. It, it was so good that he came. Mm. If he, he would not have come, I would have died. Mm. I would not have gone to search for various remedies and yoga remedies. When he came, I realized how much power is there in yoga. The faith came in my, in my With mind. With this, uh, Radhishambi, there's one question which comes to my mind, you know. It means mm -hmm. that there needs to be pain and suffering in one's life. Only then a person can be triggered for a change. You no, think so? I, I don't think so. It's a, it, it's a, it's a big question, <laughs> in fact. Uh, your consciousness your chetana, sometimes you come with uh, like previous, uh, it, your chetana comes from your previous life. Mm. So my chetana came from my previous life, liking different things, uh, which is not matching with yoga. Mm. But there are people who come with uh, great interest from very childhood. Yes. In our, we have, uh, our school has uh, a friend more than 3,000 yoga teachers. We had three participants who were, we, we straight away rejected their candidature, their participation, because the age was 14, 13, 14. Oh. I said, no, we, we cannot take you, your son or daughter. They said, just meet him or her. Oh. When I met him or her, I found great interest in that girl or boy than any grown-up person. And the way they followed our training, they went into training and followed all the discipline. It was much greater than any, any you know, aged person or any mature person. So sometimes you come with the different chetana. Yes, and sanskaras, not, you know, uh, sanskaras. our previous birth sanskaras, yes. Correct. So yeah. If you are coming with those sanskaras, you're very fortunate. So right from your childhood, yes. no problem at all. But yes. then God, the universe conspires, or you may say it is God or the supreme power. If right. you are chosen, the time, at the right time, you are changed. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So this is what has happened with you, I think. Yes, absolutely. You feel so, right. So with this yes. question, there's one people, you know, normally take uh, that yoga is something into healing. It is into physical healing as it was in your case. It was... Uh, disease asthma. 
normally people um, they must be coming to you also with the same you know intent the same desire that we will be cured of our joint pains or some other problem that they have does yoga also deal with psychomatic diseases and other kind of emotional problems that people have today the stress and so many things yes part of yoga see yoga is a very big subject hmm. but part of it also deals with therapy hmm. it deals with physical therapy it also deals with psychosomatic uh, disorders hmm. we have uh, we see many people from many countries they have come to us for uh, this kind of problem in fact 90% or you know, 95% uh, people who came to us they came with some or other physical disease and disorders and men mental disease and disorders emotional imbalance so it it really work wonder there are many people who have tried all the psychiatrists and then came to us mm -hmm. with a lot of emotional problems mm. like uh, crying with, without a reason just everybody sitting in, on dining table everybody is laughing and some thought came in the person's mind and started to cry and then ran away in, in their bedroom so this kind of disorders we have in our society and migraine and sleeplessness mm. and many things and it does cure i'm using the word cure Yes. is cured in yoga mm. so it is just, just so it, start, you, it, it starts with effect. physical and probably people then uh, uh, get interested into the deeper forms of yoga that has it happened with anyone who came with you for a you know cure or a therapy or wanted to just improve maybe his physical uh, yeah, uh, life mental happen. life something and then yes, get so what very deep into this Yes, yes. One, I uh, just uh, remembered one girl who met me in nineteen ninety seven. She came uh, because uh, her marriage was scheduled in the month of December or somewhere, mm. and she met me in September. She wanted to, to lose weight. Okay. <laughs> she uh, she was overweight. Mm. So she took uh, leave from. Uh, she left her company and said, "I want to give." these two three months time just to lose my weight and become calm and quiet mm. and she was very hyper person so she she told me i just want to lose weight i don't want anything from you mm. okay no problem only one week of training she wanted to know more about this subject yeah. and after two weeks or three weeks she said i want to learn meditation yes and after four weeks she became like i want to become a yoga teacher now oh that's great <laughs> so people do not know about this uh, yoga they don't have a real picture of what's there in, inside uh, so it's like that it's like that yes <laughs> so just to avoid these things you know how i mean what would be your suggestion to the common man how they can integrate yoga into their daily lives and why they should do it well i give an example of um, people modern men who is quite educated well educated maybe they have studied in uh, iit then iim and then harvard and cambridge and all these things but do you think their mind is in control do you think their mind is in balance no don't you see those educated people mm. committing suicide or mm. getting so anger angry that uh, they spoil their life their job their work and career and husband and wife and taking divorces and not able to manage their children and family life mm. yes yoga can offer you all these things to how to avoid all these things how to be balanced even though you have knowledge but you don't have ability to apply that knowledge inside you in your life mm -hmm. i give an example of those doctors mm -hmm. you know this uh, professional this professional professionals who are into allopathy mm -hmm. i know many doctors maaf uh, kijiye i'm sorry i'm i'm giving some negative example mm -hmm. every weekend there is a party thrown by some pharmaceutical companies 
mm-hmm. with a lot of liquor and smoking and all. And they join that party. Who knows better than a doctor what wrong and bad effect I'm getting in my lungs, in my liver by smoking and drinking. Mm. But they still do. They still drink, over drink, mm. and they become like that. So you have the knowledge, but you're not applying that knowledge in your life. Mm. You know that, you accept that yoga has great benefit, but you don't practice yoga. What is holding you? You know that going for jog and walk and gym and exercising is good. Waking up in the morning is good, but you don't wake up. So yoga, you, when you practice yoga, you get this manki shakti. Mm. It will power. Will to power. practice what you want, to practice what you really feel that is good for me. Mm. So uh, then, like I was a late riser in my young age, but now, nothing can stop me waking up by 4.30 or 5, maximum. Mm-hmm. Even though I sleep at 3 o'clock, I will wake up at 4.30. Mm-hmm. Even I work 19 hours, 20 hours in the day, but I will wake up at 4.30 or 5. No problem. Even I'm, I have traveled so much in many countries, uh, one flight to another flight, 30 hours, 40 hours journey, and I will come back and I will sleep only for 4 or 5 hours. And the morning, I will wake up and I do my sadhana and live my life with the, in the disciplined form. I will eat only what is good for me. I will not eat what is not good for me. Mm-hmm. So the discipline, that willpower, that monkey shakti comes when you practice yoga in the right form. It's very easy to slip into comfort zones. And especially, you know, when you have that peer pressure of like what you're talking about, drinking and smoking and so many things that even doctors are doing. I think it is uh, because there is no control over your senses, maybe. Yes, this is what yoga teaches, the pratyahara. What is pratyahara? This is what, how to withdraw your senses to inside. Craving should stop. Mm. Huh. When you hear some name of some uh, dishes or some sweet or some spices, immediately something comes in your mind and you want it, you want to grab it. Not just like for test, want to fill it till it comes here. <laughs> so yeah. all this discipline should be there. So and yoga is yoga. a discipline also. Yes, it is. It, is. it teaches you discipline in, oh, in, yes. in oh, your yes. life. How to control your senses. Okay. How to not get attracted with anything. You said yoga is way of life. It's a discipline. Yes. Uh, can it be called a religion also? Yes, it can be because religion also has certain rules and regulations. It's a it philosophy is. also. Mm-hmm. Right? It's a it science is. also. It is. It is. it is. I very much agree. And we have, we, when we tell people, when they come for teacher training programs, we tell all these things. It's a philosophy. It is science. It is way of life. And it is also religion, because nowadays religion is taken in a very, very wrong way. Mm. Religion, when they offered the inventors of those religions, all these religions, they offered this as a way of life. Yes. They forgot this, the discipline part, mm. uh, the philosophical part of that religion. They mm. only remember the flag, Yes. The color of the flag, mm. the chant, sitara, and mm. uh, stars and all. <laughs> so, so they only follow that. Yes, mm-hmm. I'm religious because I holding I'm holding this flag. Yes. Not that I'm following the principles, those principles. So this this differences were created because people forgot the basic, the fundamentals of any religion. That is one uh, thing, you know. So now forgetting all this, how will yoga go deeper, and how can yoga take anyone deeper into spirituality? See. Um, used, when I was uh, young, my mind was thinking, going into that dark room of pub, uh, night bars, night, night clubs, the room is so dark and there's so much of light uh, uh, focusing on your eyes and so much of a smog inside and so loud music uh, hitting your ears. Now I'm using the word pity. Ah. But at that time, it was a pleasure for me. It was a joy. I was missing whole day to go there. So it was like imitation of 
a pleasure, not the real pleasure. Today, I think, I see that as a suffering. Mm -hmm. I cannot even, this I can, but don't enjoy being there even for a second. Mm -hmm. Understand? Mm -hmm. So when you practice yoga, you remove those um, uh, oh, garbages, yeah. huh, waves, to see the things clearly or realize things clearly. Mm -hmm. So what is right and what is wrong, and what is what is there in the deep inside that uh, lake, you are able to see when the waves are not there. Yes. So yoga takes you deep inside, the mind is calm and quiet, and then you are able to see deep on the base of that lake, mm -hmm. which is there inside us. Basically, it's just growing like a child, you know, who was enjoying cars and Barbie dolls when he was five or six or seven. And then later on going into video games and then later on maturing to become, you know, all this is waste. So yoga is also taking you from asanas, physical, then into meditation and then deeper into the Small realms child, of ocean. Big child and more bigger child, the child mind remains the same. The huh. choices become becomes different. Sure. You become mature. I mean, one can become, one becomes mature. This is what we say. But yes. then it is a journey from childhood to maturity and again to child, uh, being a child. As you said Absolutely. that you had to, you know, remove your egos and become a zero. So a child is zero, yes. basically. That's why we like child. Because child doesn't have any ego. Any when ego. The yes. child is uh, uh, below two years. Uh, or, until you tell them this is your name, this is your religion, this is what who's mm. your son or daughter you are, mm. and all these identities form an ego on the child, mm. and it is not so lovable the way the child is lovable when I mean, one day old or seven months old. Yes, so it's going back to be a child and become a zero as you know, drop your identities as you did. Right. It takes yeah. a lot of, I think, effort. It's it very is, difficult it for anyone yes. who claims to be, say, I know 17, so much. 17 years, it's not one day or one month or uh, one year. Mm. It took almost 17, 18 years for me to become an egoless person. <laughs> ah. So it, it took a long, lot, lot of time. Lot even, of though time. I, uh, even, even now, sometimes it comes. But I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, constant... One day effect, it will go. One day it will be zero. Be, because we, we are always learners. We are always yes. learners. There is no end to knowledge. Yes. yes. Right? And, uh, knowledge in the sense yes. like be, be, even becoming a zero, as you said, is, yes. is to be learned. Yes. This is what identity I give to myself that I'm a learner. I'm a student. I'm a sadhaka uh, of yoga. I never give identity to me uh, that uh, I'm a master or you're a teacher or Great, great, great something. Uh, maybe for sake of the introduction part, uh, some people ask me to what what you are. I give in writing. Yeah. But in my thought here, I'm never a master. I'm just a student. Yeah. And I want to remain a better uh, a student and a better student, better learner. Yeah. <laughs> have you, you have to become a better uh, student yes. uh, day by day. Have you had an opportunity to have somebody, some student in your life? Who really wanted, I mean, who has changed totally, transformed, I can say, transformed totally, like you changed, like you changed. Has anybody in yes. your life whom you have seen changing? Many, many, many. And see, when a, an Indian uh, student comes and they take um, benefit of yoga, uh, the effort that they put is very little because they already know the value of yoga uh, mm. living in India. But I remember a girl from Brazil. She uh, had seen me in a conference in Lisbon in Portugal. Mm. And she contacted my associates uh, who were traveling with me. That uh, Who is this man about me and um, our school. She was there as an interpreter to some yoga master. And she had traveled with him many times. But, and she was practicing that kind of yoga, which is like only physical form. <coughs> Sorry. Then she contacted me through email. Then that we want to learn 
uh, yoga from a real master and real yoga. How should we go about it? I said, then you come to India or call me there. I will, with the, if you have a group of six, seven, eight, ten students, I will come and give a training. She organized uh, our first teacher student program in Brazil, and she was one of the participants, along with an uh, interpreter to me. And it was a very successful um, program. And in between, she asked me, can I become your disciple? I said, I have, I'm not a guru. I don't be, become a, I don't count myself as a guru. But you can feel whatever you want to. And after this training, uh, we always say, for the training, there is a fees. Uh, because the, we count it as donation for our ashram and many activities of yoga life. But after the training, we provide selfless support to all your life. So that's what I said. She took guidance. She was going to sadhana and practices. She was, she said, this is what word she uses for herself. I was a very horrible person. Problem to every person in my society, my parents, my friends and everybody. But Slowly, day by day, she became such a yogi person. Yogi personality came in, into her. She started her yoga school. Then one by, uh, in, a, in a few months, another yoga school, in a few months, another yoga school. She has many yoga schools now, managing yoga schools, with the spirit of serving yoga, not for earning money. Earning money. Then we together uh, started our ashram, in uh, Brazil. In 2018, we inaugurated our first ashram with the same name, Satyadhara Yoga Life Ashram in Brazil. And she is a completely changed person, transformed person. She, when you talk to her, you will realize how calm and quiet and peaceful she is, she has following the right direction of yoga mm. and living a yogic life. And mm. now people are taking advantage of her knowledge. She is guiding hundreds and thousands of people in the city. So that's really great. Yeah, and I would like to quote her name. Her name is uh, Ranizi Silveira. Okay. Yeah, she's the head of our Yoga Life Brazil. <laughs> in Brazil, right. That's great. Yes. That's great. Okay. Uh, Radhishamji, as a yoga teacher or as a yogi, uh, yoga means union. Yes. Right? Yoga yeah. means union. Now, since there are so many different religions, races, nations, different kind of people all over the world, this World United is aiming at bringing one consciousness. How mm -hmm. can you, as a yogi, as a yoga teacher, contribute to this cause that uh, we need to become a unified consciousness? There should be oneness. So what can be the contribution of a yoga teacher? You've already been talking about it right now. So how can we integrate? How can we bring the world at one platform with one consciousness, with no differences? Right. See, um, I request all the people who follow different religions to go deeper on the basics of each religion. For me, I have only gone through the basics of all the religions in this world. Mm. And I, because of that only, I started to like all the religions because almost similar, similar uh, principles are there huh? everywhere. So I request people following different religions to go only on the basics of basic principles of that religion. Not to follow other masters who came into later stage and, st and started to give you uh, that wear this and wear that. Even my guru was not uh, uh, in favor of uh, wearing this and that. Having per per uh, particular color for mm. yoga teacher. Mm. You know? She, Shankaracharya uh, was bald and like that. So people started to wear malas and these things. Yoga doesn't 
who will accept these things. They don't favor these things. Yeah. I never wear this kind of ornamental things. Mm. My guru used to say, this is all pakhand. Uh, wearing this big turban and wearing this and that. Mm. Why? Why do you need all these things? Mm. So once you understand the basic principles of all the religions, the difference will be like you have different form of body and I have different form, form of body. But inside, you and me are same. Same. So it is like that. All the religions, religions are same. Just the forms are different. That's it. There's no color difference. There is no religion difference. There should not be. It is yes. you, we, and I and you, we are all same. So we all come from the same root. This is yes. to be recognized. And people don't right. understand. People don't That's understand. Yes. yes. So what would be your message through this platform to the world? Okay, my message, <laughs> well, what, I, what I'm practicing myself, I would request and suggest people to have a thought. Uh, in the morning when you wake up, do some prayers. And in your prayer, if you can keep one thought in your mind, what I'm going to give today, not just what I'm going to get today, mm. from where I can get, from where, how I can get this, how I can get that. Mm. Instead of that, how I can give, yes. how can, I can offer more, how I can serve more mm. with my abilities, with whatever I have, how I can offer something good for the society to needy ones. That's it. Wonderful. So basically one has to be a giver Normally, we are all receivers, whether it be giving money, love, whatever you have, even knowledge. And in your case, it's the spirit of yoga that you are giving and you really want to give it. And in fact, I want the world to you know, become one because yes. yoga yes. has no religion. Yoga has no religion. Thank you so much we, for... We, we, see, we see so many religious people coming to our training programs. Yes. And uh, when they go back, they... Tell all these family and friends that no, you have guided us wrongly. That mm. don't go into yoga, it's Hinduism, it's like that. Mm. If, and if it is Hinduism, what's wrong in Hinduism? Mm. Even if it is Muslimism, what's wrong in that? Mm. <laughs> so uh, our next training program is there in coming month. There are four Muslim girls are coming from different parts of the country. So they have understood the value of yoga. There's nothing wrong in it. <laughs> there's, no, there's no religion because it is teaching you how to live, live and enjoy even this world. Yes. People are not. There is religion, full. but not the religion which are taking us different, uh, uh, up, aparting us, uh, which is, you no, know, um, how to say, which is giving, uh, bringing. Which is dividing more you. Dividing you. Yes, yes, that's the right word. Hmm. It is dividing. It's uniting you. It's uniting. This, yes. this is religion which is uniting you. If yoga is religion, yes, it is a religion to unite. To unite. Not to divide you. There are yes. people who put up the religion the way to divide you. That's no. great. No that's religion great. says that. <laughs> the best Yoga is, is the religion of oneness. Yes. Of yes. a unified consciousness. Correct. Yes. Very good. Yes. That's excellent. Excellent. And thank you so much with this. We really had a nice talk. We really enjoyed. Thank you. And thank you for sharing so much with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste. Namaste.